What is going on guys? My name is Bryn and welcome to part 23 of my tutorial series on how to create the game Super Mario Brothers. So in this tutorial, we're going to start off with one small bug fix from the last tutorial regarding priority queues. Uh, but then we're going to go ahead and move on to selectively putting items in only certain coin blocks using our tiled map editor instead of spawning an item in every single coin block, which of course isn't uh, normal for Mario. We're only going to be putting items in the select one. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, go ahead and stick with me. So first off, let's start with a minor bug fix. Uh, inside of our play screen class, we have this set to a priority queue. Um, and because we're not setting priority on any of our items, uh, the priority queue doesn't know how to deal with two items being in the queue at the same time because neither one has priority over the other. So we're going to set a linked, um, linked blocking queue uh, instead of that. And then down here where we create the new priority queue, we're going to say uh, linked blocking queue as well. And that's all we need to do. Except of course to add item def inside there. There we go. So now let's move on to the purpose of this video and that is to add items only to select bricks and coins. So uh, if you go to the B2 world creator, uh, you can see that we're getting the object and getting a rectangle and passing that to a coin or a brick and stuff like that. Instead what we're gonna do is just go ahead and add the object um, itself uh, to the coin instead of the rectangle, so we're gonna get rid of that. Um, same, we're gonna get rid of this, and we're just gonna pass the object itself uh, to the interactive tile object. And we need to go into our brick and coin and interactive tile objects and change their constructors up to uh, reflect that. So this is going to take in a map object called object, and it is the super has to call be passed object. Um, and then the same with the coin map object object and pass it the object <clears throat> and then finally uh, the rectangle uh, or the interactive tile object map object object there we go now let's go ahead and make a new protected map object variable called object and then in the constructor, we'll say this dot object equals object. And then we need to fix our bounds down here. Object needs to be cast to a rectangle map object, just like we did in the world creator previously. And then we can get our rectangle from that. And that'll fix our any errors. Okay, so I want you to open up tiles and open up your map that we've created. Uh, and then click on the coins object layer. And I want you to select the object selector tool up here and click on a coin. Now over in, or let's just click on this coin over here. Now over here you may see custom properties. If you don't, it could be over here. But find your properties panel here. And I want you to click add. And what, right here, I want you to just type in mushroom. This is adding a custom property to this specific uh, tiled map object. So if we click on this object over here, we can see that it doesn't have any properties. This object doesn't have any properties. Uh, but this object has a custom property called mushroom. Go ahead and save that. Now inside of our coin uh, object down on on head hit where we would typically always spawn a mushroom what we're going to do is say if our object dot get properties this will get all the custom properties that we set in tiled dot contains the key and this is the name of the property that we set uh, we want to check to see if there is a mushroom key there then what we want to do is um, execute the spawn method here just like this so let's go ahead and test it so here we go in uh, this coin is where we put the mushroom so if we uh, hit it uh, then we get the mushroom but if we hit these coins right here uh, no mushroom spawn so we totally did it so since we have a little extra time, I decided to add a little bonus stuff in here. Um, I've added a new power up spawn wave file. And then inside of our Mario Bros. Java class, um, where we've uh, loaded all of our previous sounds, I've added a manager.load and included the power up spawn wave as a sound class. And then what we're going to do is go into the coin class. Uh, and if it, a mushroom spawns, we're going to play the power up power up 
spawn wave class, otherwise, uh, the sound class, else, then he can just play, uh, it can just play the coin wave sound. So let's test it. So let's go ahead and test those sound effects. Turn my music on. There we go, we totally did it. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys learned something. We started off by uh, doing a little bug fixing, but then we went ahead and moved on uh, to adding items to select uh, coin blocks, which basically mimics Super Mario Maker, which is pretty cool in my book. We also added sound effects uh, when uh, we hit a coin that would spawn an item, so that was pretty cool. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it, but most importantly, uh, please share it. I'm really trying to grow this channel, and I appreciate all y'all guys' help. Uh, if you're feeling generous, check out my Patreon page. I give you two big thumbs up for that. I appreciate everybody watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.